welcome to the car guys and welcome to Brands Hatch Circuit and the GT3 Touring. Yes that's right, this is the maiden voyage for the GT3 on a track and guess what, you're coming along for the ride. Here I am at Ashgood Porsche and we're off to Brands Hatch for some track day action. Me in the GT3 Touring and car friend Tom in this fabulous example of a 964 RS in ruby stone red. My least favourite colour, but many of you seem to like them. First of all, as we leave Ashgood, we get to test the GT3's rapid front lift system, which deploys in just a few seconds, unlike those on McLaren or Ferrari. You see a speed bump and psh, it raises, so you don't take out the front splitter. Brands Hatch is an hour or so away from Ashgood's outskirts of West London location and as you can see the sun is shining, traffic is light, so this should be an easy trip. See how the sun glistens off that 964 RS in front and how small and dainty that model of 911 is on the roads of today. This is surely one of the best looking 911s and it's no surprise that it's the basis for all the singers. Just look at how much room there is either side of the 964 RS in this motorway lane. The perfect proportions for a 911. The only downside of the 964 body shell being the rest of mods favourite is that you try finding a good manual one today. It's almost impossible. Here we are then at the junction leaving the motorway and onto the A20 to head for Brands Hatch. As predicted traffic has been light and I get to listen to Spike's car radio all the way. And here we are at the Brands Hatch Circuit, one of the UK's finest and most historic tracks. Brands has seen Formula One hosted here, but today its mixture of challenging corners should give the GT3 Touring a real workout. Into the first paddock and it's time for a noise check, registration and then into the middle of the circuit itself. Welcome to Brands Hatch and welcome to the Porsche 911 GT3 Touring. So far I've done 12,500 miles in this car but not one of them has been on the track so today it's time to rectify that. I was invited here with Ashgood Porsche and Porsche Club GB to drive this car for the first time on track. Yes, I'm very excited. Yes, I think it's going to be fantastic. But more importantly, it is the spiritual home of the GT3 and it's about time, having owned the car for a couple of years, that I take it to the track. First of all, we have to drive through the pits and around the circuit in a procession for a sighting lap. This is so that we become familiar with the direction and type of corners. This is done at very low speed and with the chequered flag waving so that people don't mistake it for a flying lap. This top corner is Druid's, one of the most famous of any circuit and followed by a downhill run with the start finish straight in the distance. This corner, Graham Hill Bend, is a deceiving little so and so and it's easy to wash out wide and onto the grass. As you can see it's a moody old sky this evening but fortunately no rain is predicted rain and a GT3 Touring do not mix well together. Now we reach the clearways corner, a wide right hand bend and stay right and down to the pit entrance where we all head back into the pits to get ready for the track day. Brands Hatch this evening has been hired by the Porsche Club GB. There's quite a decent selection of cars including quite a few tasty spec GT3 RS's, the 991.2's, one in particular in jet black with gold wheels and one in signal yellow. We've also got a variety of Boxsters with different stripes and quite a few sober coloured 911's. But it's an open pit lane this evening and therefore a complete smorgasbord of Porsche. And now it's time for me to take the car out on the track. So here we go through the pits in the GT3 and out onto the track in anger for the first time ever. I've got the towing eye fixed to the front of the car, that's a fiddly bugger to do I can tell you and of course I'm wearing a crash helmet. A quick stop at the pit exit for the marshal to check my wristband, helmet and in this case to say I can only have one camera running and then it's out onto the track. 
Okay, so the first thing to point out, a car has dumped oil on the Paddock Hill Bend just after the pit straight, and that's what all that white dust is. You're not supposed to drive over it, but that doesn't stop Mr. Boxster, does it? Now, I'm not going to be setting any lap times or trying to push hard, because A, I love this car, and B, it's the first time on this track. What I am going to do is give you a tour of this magnificent British circuit corner by corner, and also try to explain what's happening to the GT3 as it warms up and we build up speed. I'm not going to be a Tiff Nadell or Martin Brundle, although we are a similar age and weight, but I'll do my best. Into Surtees, followed by McLaren, and then the sweeping right of Clearways. For some reason, this silver GT3 cuts back across at this point and gets way too close to the pitting cars. I'm just taking it easy, building up speed and getting used to the track. This is Paddock Hill Bend and it's a long right-hander off camber and with a suspension suppressing dip at the bottom that can easily upset a car and send it off into the barriers. Up to the Hellwoods Hill, under the bridge and we're down to the second gear for the tight right hairpin of Druids. Lots of overtaking opportunities here if you don't mind taking the long outside way around. Two cautious boxsters here so a quick burst to get by but you've got to be a bit careful into Graham Hill Bend or you'll understeer and smack right into that black boxster. If you're brave with the corner and the exit is clear you can stay out to the right, turn in, clip the apex and carry an enormous amount of speed through this corner setting you up perfectly for a flat out stretch of the Cooper Strait and past a grey Cayman. The GT3 is warming up now so it's time to up the pace but no braking into the left of Surtees, clip the kerb, then straight line the kink of McLaren, then stay out to the left and turn in smoothly for the long right of Clearways and onto the Brabham Strait. The natural balance and huge grip of the GT3 Touring means I'm not braking through any of this, just modulating the throttle and letting the car settle into the bends. The GT3 is having no problem coping with the off-camber of Paddock Hill or the bump, it just shrugs them off. Up ahead is a beautiful 993, which you can see is a bit timid on the exit of Druids and yes, has a bit of a moment there. I've also got a 997 Turbo in my mirrors and blocking my move to the left, so I let him through. How good and small do those cars look these days in light of the 992? Hugging the left kerb into McLaren and the GT3 feels planted and the steering waiting up nicely to allow me to judge this wide clearways turn more easily. Foot on the gas as you open up the steering past the pit entrance and it's a long blast up the hill and onto the start finish straight. On a circuit like Brands Hatch you only really notice the difference in downforce versus the winged 991.2 GT3 on the main straight and the braking point to Paddock Hill Bend. Here, if you're brave, you can hang it out and ride the curve all the way down into the depression and then back up the hill. In the Touring, you need to initially brake a bit more and take a slightly tighter line. So what's the GT3 Touring like on track? Well, it takes a few laps to get the tyres up to temperature and of course the weight of the engine over the rear wheels and the heat from that engine helps to speed up that process. Once sticky, you can press on and it's surprisingly playful at the rear end. You can stamp on the brakes to put all that weight on the front tyres, turn in keenly and rotate the car easily as you get back on the power to slingshot out of the bend. Graham Hill Bend up ahead is a bit of a nemesis for this car because it wants to go straight on and you need terrific speed and pace to cut the corner on the left and then trust in the grip to keep you away from the barriers on the right hand side. Here my exit is completely compromised. It's amazing fun to rev this 4 litre engine all the way up to 9000 rpm and hear that bellow from behind you. Ah, now, isn't that the Ashgood Porsche Signal Yellow GT3 RS up ahead? I think it is. Let's hang on to the back of him and rev this car out whilst looking at that beautiful paintwork.
Christ, that was close. Almost piled into the back of that 997 GT2 RS. Well, that wouldn't have gone down well. And it tells me that the tyres are starting to go off, so it's time to take it easy and slow down the car and cool it off. Obviously, a quick outbreak of that super cool black GT3 RS into Paddock Hill is in order, and now it's time to reflect on the day. So what's the GT3 touring like on track overall? Well, it's a GT3, isn't it? So it's a major track weapon bettered only by the GT3 RS. Grip, balance, turn-in and engine response are all top-notch. This car's got steel brakes, so plenty of feel, but not nearly as much confidence as the ceramics on my 718 Spider, especially on this downhill section. I'm not going to say the car feels 100% planted all the way around, and certainly towards the end of the sessions, it's obvious that the tyres are beginning to let go and give me a bit more slip at the rear and more understeer generally. But I have to say, it's taken an awful lot of pounding around this track before that started to happen. Into the pits then at this historic circuit, and it's the end of the day and a milestone for my long-term GT3 touring. As I've said many times, I'm aiming to keep this car forever, and this is just the latest adventure for this car on the channel, and I'm sure there'll be many more to come. So there you go, I'm bruised, battered and torn, but the GT3 Touring has finally gone on track and acquitted itself pretty well actually. But a great time here at Brands Hatch, muchos thanks to Ashgood Porsche, for inviting me along and the Porsche Club GV. If you like what we're doing on the car guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode along next week.